Hey guys, it's Daniel and Duku, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about 10 businesses that have stood the test of time. These are businesses that have been able to operate continuously for hundreds of years. Even though what they sell and how they operate might have changed, they're still the same entity. Before we do that, let's roll the intro. So business is one of the most competitive and challenging things you can ever do with your life. When you become successful, there's another competitor that springs up and wants to take the fruits of your labor. In analyzing older businesses or people that have gone before you, it lets you get insights into what's working, what isn't working, what you can do, what you shouldn't do, and everything in between. That's why these companies that have withstood the test of time are so fascinating to me. They've been able to operate for hundreds of years, they've seen competitors come and go, but they're still there. The exact way they operate might have changed, but the principles which they use to remain successful are consistent. Some of them are conglomerates, some of them are government-owned institutions, some of them are family-owned businesses. The fact that they're still alive is more important than the corporate structure or the fact that they're in this industry or that industry. One of them has even been around for 1,400 years. Now, if that's not staying power, I don't know what is. Now, they come from different countries, and I tried to cover at least one from every continent, except for Antarctica, of course, because, well, (laughs) nobody's going to have a business there. So if you're interested in this kind of thing, and you want to see more content like this, more videos like this, then go ahead and like and subscribe. That's the only thing I ask for. So let's jump right into it and look at the 10 businesses who have been able to stay alive the longest. Number 10 on our list comes from a country that has both the tallest building in the world and the most luxurious hotel in the world. It's synonymous with the terms oil money and Arab money. I'm talking about none other than the United Arab Emirates, the only place where even the police have Lamborghinis. Before oil was found, it was a country of nomadic people and fishermen with very few industries. Their existence was practical, to say the least. The oldest company was founded in 1939 and is called Liwa Chemicals. Today, it services the booming oil industry of the United Arab Emirates with things like ropes, wires, gauges, and light machinery. Let's go to the land down under to find the ninth entry on our list. Australia was founded as a prison colony to give debtors from England a second chance at redemption and has since grown into one of the strongest economies in the world. Common associations with Australia include funny wildlife, very few human beings, urban sprawl, and beaches that stretch on forever. They also happen to have the oldest company in Oceania, which is a post office. Founded in 1809, the Australian Post has been in business ever since. The tiny and beautiful island African nation of Mauritius is number 8 on our list. Of those who know it, they first think of the clear blue waters and beaches that stretch on for miles. Few realize that it houses the oldest company in Africa. The Mauritius Post was founded in 1772 when it was colonized. This made it easier for the new leaders to communicate with people back home and properly administer the colony. A common thread you'll see with the oldest companies and countries that were colonized by Europeans is that they're related to infrastructure such as railroads, post offices, banks, etc. The next step on our list takes us to one of the most populous nations in the world, India. Founded in 1736, the Wadia Group started life as a ship and dock building outfit in Bombay. It worked directly with the British East India Company and was able to secure its fortunes by building the Bombay Dry Docks, the first dry docks in Asia. Today, it consists of multiple private and publicly traded companies, which makes things as diverse as magazines to real estate and airlines. They've consistently grown over the last few years and have managed to keep control of the company within the family. The sixth entry on this list comes from the other half of the Americas in one of the 13 original American colonies. Shirley Plantation was founded in 1613 and used slave labor to grow cotton and tobacco to feed the appetite of the British Empire as well as the rest of Europe. The estate housed eight generations of the Hill family, including the mother of General Robert E. Lee, who married her husband and General Lee's father in the parlor of the mansion. To this day, it is owned, operated, and lived in by the same family. It was added to the National Register in 1969 and is considered a national historic landmark today. It's no longer growing tobacco, but cotton and other crops are grown and sold from the plantation. Let's swing over to South America to discover the fifth entry on our list. 
It's a Bolivian business that's been in existence since 1565 and has served as everything from a prison to a fortress to the headquarters of the Bolivian army for a short time. It was commissioned as the National Mint of Bolivia and sustained its purpose until the late 20th century. When you enter the courtyard, the first thing you see is a mask of Bacchus, hung there in 1865 by Frenchman Eugenio Martin Moulin. For some reason, it's never been removed. Today, it's operating as one of the most popular tourist attractions in the country and has a two-hour guided tour for the curious. While inside, you'll be greeted by thick walls, priceless paintings, and the ancient machinery of commerce. The fourth entry on our list is from China and shows that through every age, chicken is a staple of society. Mai Yu Ching's Bucket Chicken House was founded in 1153 and has been serving hungry patrons for over 900 years. That's no small feat. It's been family owned since its inception and has multiple branches around the country. There's a secret to this family owned business's success. It jealously guards its secret recipes from corporate raiders and allies alike. Even though competitors are springing up, this business is unconcerned. England knows a thing or two about conquering and pillaging the world. In order to do that successfully, you need a steady stream of income to pay soldiers and buy supplies. That's why it's apt their oldest company is the Royal Mint. Founded in 886, it ushered in an era of centralized currency which could be used across the nation. Over time, the developments discovered through the Royal Mint brought about the ability for the British Empire to expand beyond its borders and boast one of the largest empires in history. Today, it produces local and exported currencies for other central banks as well as commemorative coinage. Let's jump over to Germany for entry number two on the list. We know Germans love their beer. They have a beer drinking holiday called Oktoberfest. So it makes sense that the oldest company in the country specializes in making great wine. For over 1,150 years, since 862, Staffetter Hof Winery has been serving patrons from around the world. It started life as a wine producing abbey and was later transformed into the wine producing company that stands today. It sprawls over 10 hectares of choice land that produces the grapes used in the wine production. If you want to visit this historic site, there's an attached guest house which can house dozens and comes with guided tours. Number one, the oldest continuously operating company in the world hails from Asia. When people in the West think of Japan, it's a land of mystery, Confucianism, Buddhism, Wars fought with America, the love of the emperor, and deep respect for their ancestors. Most people don't think that it hosts the oldest business in the world. Well, it does. That business is called Congo Gumi, and it was founded in 578. It's a construction company that has been in operation for more than 1,400 years. It specializes in building Buddhist temples for a country that loves it some Buddhism. It was started by an immigrant from Korea named Shigemitsu Kongo, who was invited over by the royal family at the time. It was later acquired and is a subsidiary, but as of 2004, 80% of its $60 million in revenue came from building Buddhist temples. Talk about owning your niche. Now, I hope this list has been insightful. It's, it's giving you an idea of the kind of businesses that strive over, survive and thrive over long periods of time. And the fact that there are such disparities in the type of businesses. We had a construction company that specialized in Buddhist hotels that was able to stay in business for 1,400 years. We also had a chicken restaurant that was able to serve its family secret sauce for generations without going out of business. In addition to that, we had post offices coinages, and even a chemical plant. It just goes to show you that when you're delivering something that's essential to society, then you can stand the test of time. This is especially important in our day and age. In 1958, the lifespan for a company on the S&P 500 was roughly 61 years. Today, the average lifespan is just 18 years, and at this rate, 75% of the S&P 500 will be replaced by 2027. I hope this has given you insights into the kind of businesses you can start or what you can do to grow your business to the next level. If you enjoy videos like this, analysis videos, or videos that talk about other successful people and how they got that way, let me know. Leave a comment down below. 
subscribe and turn on your notifications because we're going to be delivering much more content like this in the coming days, weeks, months, and hopefully years. So once again, subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.